If you're looking at this unit in topic 11 for the 2014 syllabus, you've probably gone through a lot of the rest of the syllabus. It's time to start looking back and trying to make connections between some of this more advanced stuff and where it's relevant in other parts of the syllabus. So when I'm looking at this diagram here, I should be able to recognize these words, haploid and diploid. We know that all of our body cells or somatic cells are actually diploid. The gametes that made us, the sperm and the egg that came together, were haploid because because they only have half the amount of genetic information, half of the number of chromosomes, so that when they join together, they can actually create diploid cells, which is what we started off as, as a zygote, and every one of our cells came from there. We haven't really learned so much about what happens when you have three copies, so triploid and tetraploid, and you can go up to hundreds of copies in certain types of organisms as well. In the genetics unit, we also learned that there's a couple ways to kind of count the different types of genetic information. There's the genome, which is everything. We have the number of chromosomes. We have the number of genes, which are protein coding sections of DNA. And you also have your diploid number, which is the same thing as the number of chromosomes. All of these things are different, unique ways to actually kind of identify us as organisms and species. So one thing we have to make sure of when we actually make a new human is that when a sperm cell and an egg cell get together, that you only have two haploid cells combining. You don't want this happening, polyspermy, which is a fancy way of saying many sperms, many sperm cells actually fertilizing a single egg. So you probably know that this doesn't normally happen. At least you haven't heard of a human individual that is actually made up of this. Otherwise, they're not. They're going to have a, a really strange number of chromosomes. You also learned from the genetics unit in topic three way back when that you can have certain chromosomes get kind of extra. Is that a word? A certain number of chromosomes can get extra. I, I used it again. There it is. Chromosome 21, for example, if you have three copies of chromosome 21, then that can result in Down syndrome. So Down syndrome individuals will have 47 chromosomes. So there's not much to this. We just try to, our bodies try to avoid polyspermy in the reproduction unit, in this unit, and probably back in topic six as well too, you've learned about how egg cells and kind of sperm cells can combine and the mechanisms that happen when a sperm cell penetrates the outer layer, outer layer of the egg and basically shuts down the entry of other sperm cells. But it can still happen. And the point to just emphasize here is exactly what polyspermy means. It's when two or more sperm cells can fuse with an egg and you end up with a cell with possibly three copies of a chromosome. Uh, most of these cells are going to die. Others will end up being sterile. Your body does a pretty good job of kind of weeding out these abnormal cells that are forming. And so avoiding polyspermy is just something that we do in order to um, preserve our chromosome number and preserve ourselves as a species.